everyone, I am Dr. Shannon Ralph and I have taught high school biology for a while. I am gonna tell you that just because my experience is solely in the secondary classroom, the, the takeaways I'm going to be offering you are really relevant for every classroom. I'm going to provide you a few examples of things that I do that have worked well for me and I think you can take them and modify them and make them yours. Before we get started, I do want to tell you that building a positive classroom culture, it takes time. This is not a one and done kind of thing. And it's the little things that you do that matter. So keep that in mind as we go through. So let's get started. Takeaway number one, your first day is critical. I remember one time I had a student teacher and she didn't start with me on my first day. See, she actually came to me I don't know, two or three weeks into the semester. And she was like, wow, your, your room is this well-oiled machine. Your students are engaged and they seem to be learning and there's all of this great stuff going on. And we had to have a conversation that that kind of environment does not just happen. You have to be really intentional and make some key decisions early on to set up that kind of environment. So step one, learn your students' names and learn them quickly. I get it, I get it. Elementary and middle school and secondary, the number of students you have varies, I get that. But the truth is it doesn't matter. You need to learn their names rapidly because when you can speak to your student and speak their name, what that says to them is you are important to me, important enough that I have learned your name. And P.S. Pronunciation matters. So find out, are you saying their name correctly? Is there a nickname that they prefer to use? Those are the kind of details that matter straight out of the chute. As you are beginning to think about setting up your procedures for your classroom, you need to think about on that first day, you're only going to do the things that your students need to know for day two. If they come in and you overwhelm them with, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this, they're gonna shut down. And so you want them on board with you and you want them leaving on day one thinking, I love that class or I love that teacher. That's your goal. For me, there are three things that I think about. I think number one, what do I want them to do when they come into my classroom each day? At a secondary level, you know, we have um, bells and, and classroom changes, and so they all kind of filter in at different times. I want them to know what, what should they be doing until class officially starts. The second thing is I have pods, that's what I call them. I put my desk together in groups of four, I call them pods, and the people they sit with I call pod mates. And so I always do an activity that involves them learning about their pod mates. And the advantage for me of that is when they come to my room on day two, they have three friends built in. And I stress to them the importance of getting to know those people because they're gonna be on a learning journey together pretty frequently for the, for the whole first semester. Lastly, I am gonna tell you that when you make those procedure, make sure you tell your students why you're gonna do these things. You'll get way more buy-in if they go, oh, we're gonna do this thing because here's why it helps us learn. Here's how, here's why it helps our classroom, as opposed to just saying, you're gonna do this and this and this. And finally, I use music, like I love music. And I build a playlist for the very first day of school. I have a playlist for when they come in, I have a playlist for transitions. I have a playlist for music to play at the end of the block if we have a few minutes. And I am gonna tell you this is a great chance to have your students have a say in your classroom. So on the very first day, I have students give me a song that they would like to include in the playlist. You can do this from kinders to seniors. Okay, high school teachers, has to be school appropriate, I always say that part, but I, may, I build these playlists and you'll be so surprised when you play that playlist and a student song comes up, they will light up, oh, hey, that's my song. So it's a great way to begin to build collegiality between you and your students. Takeaway number two, teach and practice routines. So now that you've got the first day under your belt, now it's time to start implementing those little things that will help your classroom run smoothly. I will tell you that a classroom that runs smoothly feels safe 
and students have to feel safe in order to learn. So introduce those a little bit at a time. How are we gonna line up for recess? What do you do when you come back for lunch? How do we turn our papers in? What do I do if a paper doesn't turn in right electronically? Ah, those kinds of things you begin to build up so that they know exactly what they're gonna be doing while they're in your classroom. Sometimes we get the notion that if we teach those things in August, they should be good. And I was talking to some colleagues just last year, and we were talking about why are we seeing some of the student behavior that we are, and we reminded each other, you have to reinforce all year long, and yes, all year long, here's what we do, and here's why we do it. Like, continually do that, and it will reduce the behavior problems that you'll see in your classroom. Takeaway number three, give students a voice whenever possible. If a student feels heard, they are more likely to learn. And there's some little ways you can do this. What I do is I start every single block with what I call a check-in question. You can call it whatever you want. And I get the craziest, silliest questions I can find. Never do I have them be content related. So I might say something like, would you rather be able to run 100 miles an hour or fly at 10 miles an hour? And you know, you've got those students who are more boisterous and oh, they'll tell you and they'll, they'll give you a reason and they'll tell you where they're gonna fly, all of that stuff. But then you have the students who have that small, still voice and they'll, you know, they'll give you the one word answer. And it doesn't matter what their answer is. What matters is that they speak and they know that you've heard them. Along those lines, make sure you speak to your students, each student, every single day. If you have really big classes, that's pretty tough to do. So in your head, think, okay, today, I'm gonna to speak to each student on this side of the room, and tomorrow, I'm gonna to speak to each student on this side of the room. And it has to be authentic. Like, you don't get to make stuff up, but you will find that if you are intentionally looking for things with which to speak your students, then you'll find those things, and students will definitely respond to that. Hi everyone, Dr. Lori Levine here from Kansas State University. I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for being interested in the teaching profession and thank you for all you are doing to serve students and your community. If you don't yet have your bachelor's degree in education and you're seeking teacher licensure, I would invite you to check out our Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education online degree. This is a powerful, fully accredited program taught by faculty at Kansas State University. This online program is available to anyone in all 50 states, as well as internationally. We make transferring credits into Key State easy, and we have a number of generous scholarships, grants, and financial aid available. We pride ourselves on teaching strong pedagogical practices, having close relationships with our students, and peer support as you start your teaching career. You can check out more information about our award-winning program by visiting the website listed below. Thank you. Provide student choice whenever possible. You're gonna find when you're doing your lesson plans, if you think about that, almost every single day, you're gonna be able to provide your students some choice in what they're doing. So here's the skill we wanna learn. You can either do this or this or this, which do you wanna to do to demonstrate your mastery of that skill? Or in my class, I always had on the board every single day, here are the skills I want you to know. And most often it didn't matter to me the order that we do them. So I would say, hey, we're gonna do this and this, what do you wanna do first? And the class would always, oh, we'll do the harder one first or whatever. But again, it's those little things that build up when they feel like they have ownership in their learning, you're gonna find that you build that positive classroom culture. Takeaway number four, create an environment in which mistakes are a part of the learning process. This was brought home to me a number of years ago when I helped run a STEM camp and it was for fourth and fifth graders. And I'll never forget the very first day on our first activity, we had kids come in and we had them build gliders and each team was given a task. So we said, okay, here's all of these materials. Now you have to modify your glider so that it always flies right or something like that, right? And there's this team and they went outside and I know you already know what's gonna happen. They flew their glider, right? It crashed and burned. And they came up to us and they're like, our, you know, our, our glider crashed. And we said, okay, so go fix it. 
and they, they had this look on their face that told me that was kind of a new thing for them. And we said, no, we're not kidding. You've got all this stuff in the classroom. Go fix it and try again. And you could see them walking away and they were like, is this a trick? Is this a trap? You know, and they came back out and then on we went. By the last day of the camp, because we ran our whole camp like that, I can't even describe for you. We would say, we're going to do this thing. And they'll go like, they, ooh, off they went, right? Because they knew they were going to be able to make mistakes and fix them and learn from them. That that was part of the learning process. They weren't going to be penalized. We weren't going to get mad. All of those things mattered and it was super relevant. I will tell you that when you're doing your lesson plans, you need to make sure that everything you do has purpose. If someone walks in your room and said, why are you doing that thing? And you can't answer that question, then you shouldn't be doing that thing. And make sure that you are explicitly explaining to your students, hey, we're doing this thing and here's why we're doing this thing. This is the skill that I want you to learn. I tell my students every year and I tell them often, I will never, ever, ever give you busy work. They learn to trust me and that becomes a part of our, our environment in our classroom. And takeaway number five, lean on others for help. I don't know when this notion developed of asking for questions is a sign of weakness, but it's not. Asking questions is a sign of strength. We are teachers. We have to support each other. You have rock stars in your building, in your district. And so all you have to do is reach out. Find those positive teachers. Find those people who are growing and doing new things and trying to get better and ask them questions. If they're a rock star, they're going to want to share their expertise with you and they're going to want to learn from you too. So make sure that you connect with those people. Also find things that will, that will support yourself and your own growth in this journey and help you perfect your own craft. It can be a podcast. It can be a book or a book study. Perhaps your colleague, perhaps your principal, maybe a learning coach. Whatever that is for you, you have to really be, think about being intentional about growing your own craft as you walk this journey. So five takeaways, hopefully it's a starting point for you. I know you can do it. <laughs>